Good day. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to code a battery charger routine in a microcontroller. And in this case, it's a PIC24 FJ64 GA002. And um, I would also like to say um, that um, the more advanced microcontrollers that this could be done on, uh, it's going to be coded on. The major purpose of this video is just to show the routine, uh, how you'd go about coding it for a PIC microcontroller. Sorry about that, for a PIC microcontroller or um, a STM32 because they're very similar in terms of the fact that they are very comfortable with using floating point values in the code. And also Texas Instrument, some types of Texas Instrument microcontrollers anyway. Um, so I'm just going to dive straight into the code. So um, in terms of a battery charger, there's certain things to take into account, right? Um, one has to take into account that there are three states, the three charge states, the, the bulk state, the absorption, and the float state. To be honest, I'm not quite sure which one comes first, the absorption or the float, but I, I know in both of those two stages, one has to implement a constant voltage routine all right different levels I, I guess the float is the the, the final state or uh, I, I'm, I'm not so sure but i know for absorption and float there are two different voltage um, levels that are used there so that's constant voltage and for the bulk it's a constant current so so in terms of battery charges battery charges have to implement constant current and constant voltage but not at the same time, obviously, but um, at different periods of time based on the charge of the battery. And also the batteries, you should have a certain charge voltage that should not be exceeded, right? And um, so that's in essence what is being used in this particular routine, those taking those things into account. So I'm, I'm just going to dive straight into it. So this is, the, this is a PI, PID control. Um, stage here. Um, I'm going to link a document to the basically explains how you get to this form of a PID control, PI controller. This form, it's a it's a velocity form PI controller. Basically, this this right here, it's a velocity form, and um, that's what this is. And um, there's uh, there are two types, two forms of PI controller: is the position and the velocity form. But I find the velocity form um, is very useful. It um, works much better in um, um, power electronics, power electronics applications. In terms of DC motor drives, position form works. Not not DC motor drives. Um, um, yes, DC motor speed control, position form works better in those aspects. But for this, I find velocity form to work much better um, for me anyway. And anyway, so this is what this is. So the error is stored in an array, and the PI controller output, um, the current step out, the uh, control step output is stored in an M array, and the error is stored in an E array. And uh, well, the this disadvantage of the velocity form is you sort of have to keep track of two errors back. So that's what these three um, things are for. Is essentially the previous error is equals to the current error, previous previous error is equals to the previous error. So that's what these three lines are doing, and this is the current error, um, zero. Um, the current voltage error, which is V charge minus V actual, and then this is the PI controller um, step. Um, there isn't really much I could say about that. Um, the document sort of explains how they arrived to this. It's, it's strictly mathematical. Um, this is essentially just copy and paste from the mathematical form straight into the digital form. Um, the one thing that we have to like sort of tune is the is the other coefficients essentially, which I'll show um, general um, thumb sock rule in, in in a second. And this aspect here is um, basically just limiting the duty cycle, right? And the way this operates, the control max, the max duty cycle is zero point. It's it's on a scale of one. So the maximum, I believe, is 0 0.8, which is 80%. And the minimum is 0, 0.0, which is 0%. 0 and it's all scaled, right? So this is OC1RS. So it's all scaled in the end. So max duty for this particular microcontroller 
for a uh, switching frequency of 100 kilohertz um, the microcontroller uh, max duty is 159.0 so that's scaled as you can imagine if this was 0 0.8 that would represent 80 percent duty cycle you sort of have to scale that to what the microcontroller has um, represents 100 percent duty cycle width which will be here and um, the max duty which is specified above it's defined 159.0 and yeah, that's 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 that for the voltage control. But um, one thing to take note of, as well, is the V charge. As you'd notice, the V charge is not explicit, explicitly specified. So the V charge is actually in this particular code, this particular example, the V charge is specified by another um, control loop, which is the outer control outer outer loop, which is for the current. So this particular here this right here is specified so assuming we're in the bulk state state of the charger you would specify this i charge let's say you specify that to be i don't know six amps you'd specify that um and then it will do another pi controller um routine as um just the same as the voltage it's just now it's i we're using an i array instead using an i array and also limiting the value to be one this value the maximum should always be one because that's how it, it, it works based that way and then after that it's multiplied by the v charge max to sort of scale it as it was scaled here right only that this time the v charge max is actually the max voltage that we, uh, we actually want to charge it right so you, you don't want to exceed this particular voltage so in this case i think i set it up to be um 30 right but um in reality if you're charging a 24 volt battery to be lower than that but in this case just for the sake of this example i'm just assuming the v charge max is 30. um so the v charge max there is 30 right so if the maximum value of this variable is one then the V charge will never go above 30. It will always be the maximum V charge set point will always be 30. So intrinsically, right with this, you basically have something that just limits already the, your charge voltage and you never exceed that particular voltage for your battery, like while charging your, your battery in this case. And this is actually sort of opposite to average current mode control, how you go about that. Because average for average current mode control, the outer loop is the voltage loop and the inner one is the current loop. Whilst in this case, the outer one is the voltage. No, sorry. The outer is the current and the inner is the, is, is, is the voltage. Um, yeah. And I've actually tested this on a physical system. I, am, I can certify that this, this does not give um, funny results. It actually gives favorable results. Um so that's so that's the case so that's essentially is it and everything else is just to ensure that everything works properly because so this right here the current i loop count is just increments itself and then it's basically 20 times less fast than the voltage loop so the voltage loop happens every 130 microseconds um yeah you can increase that speed if you you can reduce that if you want by increasing the time obviously maybe that's too much in your various applications and um, so this is 20 so once it equals to 20 um, it will actually um, execute this loop but first it will zero out that variable so the I loop count will become zero and that's what that is um, yeah So that's that, that essentially is it. And oh, sorry, before I forget, also one has to consider um, the, the, the battery charging, right? So um, this is actually quite important. So this is, I'll just zoom into that. Um, so the battery units most, most of the time are usually in amp hours, right? Or if it's in milliamp hours, you can easily convert that to amp hours by divided by a thousand, and then you get it in amp hours. So 
the current is calculated with a vice sampling, right? So on each interrupt, the current reading is taken. And the interrupt in this case occurs every 150 microseconds. I think I said 130, it's actually 150. So it happens here every 150 microseconds. So hence, the unit of charge reading is amp per microsecond, right? So it's not going to be, let me just close that. Close it. Right, so imagine this is the charge curve, right? I don't know. This is how it's charging. Okay, this doesn't make sense. Um, let's go there. Wow, this is gonna take forever. All right, so let's say this is the charge curve, right? This is charge curve. So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to get the, the total charge, right? So we're sampling like that. We're basically doing the sampling like that and reading the, the current we're getting on each, right? We're getting the current on each, um, sample which in this case is happening every 150 uh, microseconds so so once we get that so once we get that this is the unit of the current that we get so it's um let's say the current that we read after so we're starting at time zero so after 150 microseconds let's say the current we read is two amps so it's actually going to be two amps per microsecond now we have to convert convert that to amp hours, right? From amp microseconds to amp hours. And the way you do that is you literally multiply by one divided by a thousand microseconds. Oh, sorry, a million microseconds. So there's a million microseconds in one second. And then you say one divided by a million microseconds, multiply by one second, multiply by one divided by 3,600 seconds, which is uh, multiplied by one hour. Right, and that way you get amp, my mi amp microseconds to amp hours, and when you actually calculate that in the calculator, what what you get in the end is this. Uh, where is that calculation? It's four point one six seven times ten to the power of minus eight. Right, very small value, but it adds up over a couple of hours. Uh, I don't know, depending on how high your I actual is. Obviously, if you, this is very high, then it will not take a lot of time before it actually gets to your P charge max. And also, this is where an assumption has to be made, right? The initial charge, the initial charge, right? So the, this charge, this charge has to be assumed based on the voltage of the battery. There are other um, more effective ways to actually do that, but the only way that I know for sure, that I know, um, not a perfect way, but the only way that I know is using the voltage. You actually measure the voltage of the battery and um, assume what the initial charge is, right? Maybe you say check the voltage and you see, okay, I'm assuming this is what it's on 30% charge at this point, and then you go you go from there. So in short, um, this this value so essentially you have that initial charge and then you have the I actual and then basically you just you're just adding on you're just adding on to the to the initial charge um, and actually there should be another line I think the B charge this should actually be added so so the B charge is actually equal to the B charge because you you want you want this to accumulate, right? You want this to be something um, cumulative. So you want the B charge to be equal to be B charge plus the initial charge plus this. So this is sort of going to keep making this entire thing um, bigger, and this um, it should increment. And to actually get the battery um, charge percentage. 
um, um, actually to get the battery part charge percentage you, you just say B charge divided by B charge max multiplied by 100 and then that will be it but in this case um, the B charge max I assume is uh, 15, 15 amp hours and the initial charge I assume to be 0.0 because .0, I'm assuming the voltage of the battery was rated as 0 you know um, alright so in essence the unit oh sorry I was gonna talk about this so this is basically for it to transition from absorption to float or float to absorption I'm not sure which is which to be honest I know disappointing but it's um basically this should trans transition from um, from one of those states to the other because it's a it's a different voltage level right so here the actual V charge max is 30 at this point so um, usually you want to increase that so it will be like 30 31.0 right so assuming that the charge the current B charge is greater than 0 0.85 times the B charge max so this is the if statement if it's greater than that then we can tr we can tr transition to the to the next charge state which is a, another voltage a higher voltage so the the V charge max will not be 30.0 anymore it will become 31 at this point this is how that makes sense so um, so first you have you have constant current and then you have two stages of constant voltage right so you have two stages of constant voltages but how do you transition from one state of constant voltage to the other state you basically do that by after it's gotten to a certain level of charge is is the is what this example is is using anyway once it gets um past a certain level of charge then it can transition to the next um voltage vo next level of constant voltage which is what this entails and you cannot do that if you don't know the b charge and the b charge the battery charge at this point um in amp hours is calculated using this so the b charge equals the b charge plus the initial charge what it what the battery had in the beginning and the this is what's gonna keep making it get bigger basically the I actual um, what the, what we actually sensed what is actually sensed and the I actual multiplied by that and the way you get this value here is basically this oh, let me just zoom it in so you basically just say amp power so in this particular example the interrupt occurs every 150 microseconds so it's actually 150 um, divided by okay do that do that divided by oh, shucks let me just say multiply oh come on multiplied by one divided by Oh, you know what? Let me just copy and paste this. Right. Let me just copy and paste this right there. Alright. You do that. And one second. One divided by three is thirty six hundred. Yes. That's it, to be honest. That's that. There you have it. that's it and that's how you get um that's how you get the the the, the charge the cumulative charge i guess and that's how you calculate that i i, I guess the name the call this is coulomb counting um if i'm wrong please do correct me but uh i um i guess that's what they this is coulomb counting um counting the charge I guess and yeah that's about it and uh, and also for the sensors which are quite important this part is calculated so this is the big resistor for a voltage divider small resistor divided by a small resistor and that's how we obtain this and the 5.0 here represents the V-Ref sometimes it's 3.3 and the 1023 
represent 2 to the power 10 minus 1 or 2 to the power 12 minus 1 in the case of a 12-bit converter and in which case this would be 4095 and in this case with the current uh, 20 amp current sensor is used which is 100 millivolts per amps and why so this is 0 0.1 and there's an offset of 2.5 and basically this is done to save um, time essentially so we don't spend a lot of time just calculating this as such and that's what that is that's essentially it for a, for a battery charger and initializing v charge v charge mats v actual i charge i actual and the loop count obviously and the charging um, variables and the current and the error error erase for the pi controllers so that's one thing to note um yeah that's that's about it really um and also before i forget tune in i guess the tuning rules for i don't want to forget these so you just follow these tuning rules um for that you always want to start low obviously i've took taken the liberty to sort of increase the kp and the ki for the for these i've increased them maximally maximize them but for the but for the inner loop you want to be sort of careful with it this here you want to start you always want to start with these you want to start slow 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 and ramp your way up following this rule 3.5 times ki etc and um that's how you do it and that this is actually not necessary max voltage and let's do that and now to simulate so basically i set up the um the charging to be 6.5 at first so now it's just going to change it to 5.5 just do that all right and i'm just going to run it obviously in an actual battery charger you want you'll probably need the, like a protection relay here and the spot here and um and you'd also, and this, you'd place it here, you'd have the relay over here, and then you have another, another, um, um, resistor divider to sort of monitor the voltage of the battery, but you'd have to disconnect the relay to actually do that effectively, uh, and that's, that's how that would go, and, um, yeah, yeah, shot key diode, regular, regular MOSFET in channel perfectly, right, so, you just zoom in obviously it's not super as you can see it's fluctuates quite a bit but um, obviously you can get better results with a higher resolution microcontroller some higher PWM resolution but this clearly is 5.5 volts and in this case it's quite conservative because it's it's slow um, on purpose as you can see the voltage the voltage coefficient as you can look at that it's actually quite slow um so um yeah that's why it, it's slow to the set point but anyway that's it that's it for the for this particular code oh this is not necessary um yeah and as for the mcc part if you're looking to implement this in this particular micro microcontroller this is what sh the mcc should look like the adc auto sampling n0 n1 oc1 Use this timer two, timer one. The loop is 150 microseconds. Keep in mind, if you're gonna use a loop this fast, you should probably make sure your sensors are immaculate, in immaculate condition. Um, basically, what that means is you have, you at least have some sort of filter here, a uh, capacitor there, 10 nanofarads, perfectly, or 100 nanofarads. And that your current sensor is um, placed properly. Sorry about that. And that your current sensor is placed properly, and not um, placed weirdly, such that there's like a lot of noise on the output there. And um, yeah, and the timer two, 10 microseconds, which is equivalent to 100 kilohertz. And a UR is strictly for testing purposes. It's not required, actually. 
and uh, yeah so this is a this is a how you implement the battery charger and um, if you wanna see how you can implement this with like a solar solar charge controller this um, another video for that um yeah so that's that's about it the things to keep in mind is essentially this pi controller the voltage and the v charge this is the this is the real um the, the crock the, the main part this v charge changes based on the based on the bulk state stage and the absorption and the flow the v charge changes right and the v charge essentially for the bulk state it's it acts more like a limiting feature voltage limiting and um, and to to ensure it's more like over voltage protection in a way but it's it's just it's more intrinsic whilst you you still have a constant current anyway so that's that Alright, so that's that's about it for for battery charging. And um, if you have any questions regarding this, please do ask. Um, if I know the answer, I'd probably answer. Um, yeah. All right. Um, all the best in your various um, your applications of this, if you're going to use it. All right. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.